Thank you again. We are now on lesson number two. That is a continuation of our first lesson. What is our authority in religion today? The answer is the Bible is our authority in religion today. So we are going to study the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible. So why do we need to study this lesson? If you will notice, all other religions, they have doctrines which are not found in the Bible. And this study, you will learn that our authority in religion must be the Bible and only the Bible. Let's start. All that we teach and practice must come from the Word of God. Every question and every issue, as far as religion is concerned, can be answered by the Bible. Every division, every different religion that sprouted is a result of failure to recognize the authority of the Bible. In other words, they still have authority aside from the Bible. They have doctrines written by men which are not found in the Bible. Maybe you will be surprised for hearing this. In fact, many members of a certain, you give me a religion, and I will tell you, the members do not know that they have doctrines which are not found in the Bible. And the members thought that all what the preachers teach, what the priests teach, what the pastors teach, they thought it came from the Bible. No, sir, no. Not all come from the Bible. That's why you will understand why are there many different religions because they cannot walk together. And they cannot walk together because what? They do not agree. Why is it that they do not agree? Because they have different authority. They have different teachings which are not found in the Bible. Okay. The first thing we will learn about the Bible is that the Bible is complete. The Bible speaks for itself that all things that we need for salvation, all things that we need for good works to preach God are found in the Bible. Another thing, the Bible gives us knowledge of all things that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that you need on how to live a Christian life, everything that you need in order to live a godly life are found in the Word of God. So, you do not need to read any books. It's all there in the Word of God. Another thing. We will not read these verses anymore, but 2 Peter 1, 3 tells us, As His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Okay, so there might be some of you who are taking notes. I will try to look for a way how to send you a hard copy of these verses. Okay? But in the meantime, let us uh, just be contented of this explanation. However, I will guarantee that I can provide you all these verses so that at home you can read them 
for yourself. Another thing, the Bible is all sufficient. The Bible does not need any other book to support itself. No, the Bible can stand by itself. It is sufficient. Meaning, it is sufficient to save people during the time of the apostles. Okay? Do you mean to say that the Bible today is not enough to save a person? No, it is sufficient. If the Bible, because the Bible can save people at that time, 2,000 years ago, the Bible has the same power today. It can still save people today. In fact, I will give you this information in advance that those things, these doctrines made by men, cannot save you. It can bring your soul to heaven. Only the Bible can bring you to heaven. So, if it was sufficient to make man in Paul's day complete, why not take the same scripture today to make you complete man? It was all sufficient for the apostles and the early church should be also sufficient for us in this age. The Bible is complete. The Bible is sufficient. You don't need any other book. The Bible is for all time and all ages. You don't need to revise the Bible. See, what is happening today, people try to change the meaning of the Bible. People try to change the words in the Bible. The Bible does not need revision. It will still be the same Bible from the day that it was completed during the time of the apostles until today and until the end of the world. It is for all times and all ages. You do not need a new book or a new doctrine, no. The doctrine that was required by God during the time of the apostles are the same doctrines that God required 500 years later, 1,000 years later, 1,500 years later, 2,000 years in our present time, and it will be the same doctrine that God will require for the future generation until Jesus comes back to it. Another thing, we have already learned that the Bible is the final authority. When it is the final authority, do not expect another new doctrine to become. Final means that's the last. You see, when was the last? About 100 years ago, when John the Apostle died. That was the last. That was the, nothing is added to the Word of God. So, of course, these are the verses, and so there are some verses that I would like us to read. Galatians 1, 8 to 9. What did Paul write? Though we, Paul said, we apostles, or an angel from heaven, imagine, an angel from heaven, preach, any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. What did Paul say? If somebody comes to you and teaches a doctrine different from what you read from the Bible, Paul said, let him be a curse. You see the danger? The danger of teaching another doctrine different from the Bible? And I would like to tell you, my brethren and my friends, that many today, you count the number of religions existing today, that's also the number of gospel different from what the Bible. And you can see the anger of God when people what, teach another gospel different from what you read in the Bible. And it was repeated in verse 10. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preaches any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. There was already a gospel that was preached. 
That's what we call the original gospel. See? There can not be another gospel if there is no original gospel. But again, you can see the anger of God. He said, even though an angel, even though an angel appears to you, what did Paul say? Let him be a curse. Many today are claiming that they receive what? They receive message from God. They claim that they receive visions. They claim that they receive prophecies. They, they claim that an angel taught them. What did Paul say? Let them be a curse. So, what does this mean? That settles the problem. That the Bible is the final authority. There are no more, no more new revelations since the last book was written. No more. So you can, you are beginning to understand why there are many religions. Because there are those who claim that they have received what? Messages from angels, from God, from, you see, but Paul said, no more. The last was in during the time of John. So we are learning the authority, the Bible, that there is no any other authority except from the Bible. No more angel coming to tell us, oh, these are new revelations. None. Because the Bible is complete. The Bible is also sufficient. Okay. Second John 9. Whosoever transgresses, you see the warning. Whosoever transgresses, what is transgressor? Meaning you go beyond. You teach something which is not in the Bible. Whosoever transgresses and what? Abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. When a person does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, he is going beyond the doctrine of Christ. What did John say? But not God. So when you teach a doctrine not found in the Bible, you do not have God. That's a milder term. But in simple terms it says, you go to hell. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ. So when you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have no more elbow room. See, you are contained in one container. And that is the doctrine of Christ. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had what? Both the Father and the Son. You see the danger of not teaching what the Bible teaches? The danger of teaching beyond what the Bible teaches? You're lost. You don't have God. So those who are saved are those who abide by the doctrine of Christ. Now, John 12, 48, we will repeat <clears throat> what did Jesus say? He that rejected me and received not my words hath one <clears throat> that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same word shall judge him in the last day. In other words, open your Bible. You read what the Bible said. You don't believe it. You're lost. That's simple. But if you want to be saved, you not only believe it, but you obey it, what Jesus said. Let me give you an example. Can you read in the Bible? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Can you read that in the Bible? Yes, Mark 16, 16. And that came from the very lips of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, what did Jesus say? You reject those words. You're lost. But if you believe those words and obey, you're saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Okay, so... What did we learn? That if we have other authority 
which teach more than the Bible, they teach too much. If they teach less than the Bible, in other words, the Bible teaches it, but they don't teach it, then they teach too little. If they teach the same as what the Bible teaches, then they are not needed. I would like to advance this information. All religions have their doctrines written. Doctrines which are not found in the Bible. They teach too much. And they also have doctrines wherein it does not contain what the Bible teaches. So they teach too little. But if you make a statement of faith and practices the same as what is in the Bible, then there's no need to make one. So therefore, so what are the restrictions and the warnings of the authority of God, which is the Bible? First is, do not add, do not add to the Word of God. It is complete. That's not your book. That's God's book. We don't have the right to add. God said, if you add, He will add the plagues, meaning your loss. You cannot also subtract from the Word of God. If you subtract, then He will take you out from the Book of Life. Another warning, you cannot change or substitute. To give you an example, in the Bible we read, baptism is immersion, baptism is a burial. That's it. You have no right to change. Some have changed. Instead of burial, they use sprinkling. Instead of burial, they use powering. Instead of burial, they use dropping of water on the forehead. You see, that's how they, they change. So that's no longer the word of God. Those are already doctrines made by men. Another thing, you cannot go beyond what is written. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. What is written in the word of God? Jesus built only one church. Although that's not our lesson, but I'm giving you an example. Jesus said, I will build my church. The word church is singular. And he said, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The singular. The church is the body, singular. So, when people go beyond what is written, what do they teach? Oh, Jesus has many churches. That's one way of deceiving people. Jesus has only one church. The church is his body. Jesus has only one body. And I would venture to go farther. In Ephesians 5, 23, Jesus, a Paul wrote, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he, Jesus Christ, he is the savior of the body. And we know the body is the church. There's only one church that Jesus will save, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you believe it or not. The authority says there's only one church that Jesus will save. Okay, another restriction. There are no more new revelations. Of course, we are forbidden to add to the Word of God. Obviously, it means there are no more new doctrines, no more new revelations. I have already explained this. Now, What are we charged? We are charged to abide 
in the doctrine of Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ has a doctrine. And we must abide in that doctrine. And of course, in order for you to know whether you have you are abiding in the doctrine of Christ, first of all, you have to know what is the doctrine of Christ. How can you abide in a doctrine that you don't know? So the first thing, your first obligation is to know what is the doctrine of Christ. Then and there, can we be aware that we are abiding in the doctrine of Christ. We are also charged to walk according to the pattern. The New Testament is the pattern. And we should walk according to what the pattern is. We should speak as it is written. You can only speak when it is written. But if it is not written, how can, how can you read something into something that is not there? How can you read when it is not there? So we can only speak when it is written. In other words, when the Bible does not speak, when the Bible is silent, you cannot talk about it. You cannot talk about a subject that the Bible doesn't talk about. Of a subject that you cannot read in the Bible. We are what? Charged to speak as the oracles of God. When the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, that is what we should preach. When the Bible says that there is only one church that Jesus will save, that is what we should preach. And all of us must speak the same thing. So when I speak that there is only one church that Jesus built, another will speak that Jesus built many churches. We are not on the same plane. So how do you know who is telling the truth? You go to the authority because the authority is the one that determines who is saying the truth. And so the authority, which is the Bible, say there's only one church. So in other words, those who say that Jesus has many churches, they are not telling the truth. And we learn in John 8, 32, it is the truth that saved. It is error that would damn our soul. So when I teach error, it will force you to go to hell. That's why we strive to, what? to teach the truth. So we walk by the same truth. We walk by faith, meaning faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we walk as what the Bible says. We walk as what we read in the Bible. We walk as what God has said. Faith cometh by hearing, meaning you heard it in the word of God, and hearing by the word of God. Then you are walking by faith. Okay, then we do all in the name of the Lord, meaning we do all by the authority. If Jesus did not authorize it, we should not do it. But if Jesus authorized it, we don't have the option. We must, we must do it. That is what we are charged. Then we have to observe all things that Jesus has commanded. All. All things that Jesus has commanded. That is what we are going to observe. Jesus did not say we have to observe 95% or 90% of what he has commanded. Or Jesus did not say you have the option to obey or not. It's absolute. Jesus said, what did Jesus say? All things that I have commanded you. So, in other words, what have we learned to close this short lesson? What have we learned about the Bible, which is the authority in religion? Christ's law, which is the New Testament, is the basis of the Father's judgment at the end 
of this age. You will not be judged by the doctrine of your religion. You will be judged by the word of God. That's faith. And therefore, that brings us to our obligation. What does the Bible say? You have listened so well. Thank you very much for your wonderful attention. We will have a break for a few moments. And then after this, we will go to our third lesson. The Lord bless us.